Today I'm going to share with you a teaching method, or you could call it routine, which let's just politely say I regard it as unhelpful. And then I'll show you my own method, which I think actually works. It's to do with the way you approach a junction. Most driving schools in the UK teach the mirror, signal, position, speed and look routine, which I have hated from the first moment I heard it. Here's why. So, in order, firstly there's mirrors. Great idea. Good idea to know your surroundings before you do a manoeuvre. Then there's a signal. Also a very good idea to let people know where you're going, so long as it's not misleading. If it's misleading, best not to signal. Then position. Yes, position. Like, should I not have done position five seconds earlier or position five seconds of the future? Should I do position now just to take part in the routine? Then speed. Also very sensible to adjust your speed appropriately as you approach the junction. Normally you'll be slowing down. And then look. Like I wasn't looking before. What does look actually mean? <sighs> Best of all about this routine is it doesn't even include gears. And this routine is taught in the UK. And last time I checked, 93% of people learn manual in the UK. Very helpful. I guess you can probably tell what my thoughts are on this order. And the routine I have created is mirrors, signal, speed, gear, and this side. Okay, it's not wildly different from the usual order you hear of, but it is a bit different. I have taken away position, and the reason why I took away position is because I think position should be done all of the time, not just at some part in your routine after signal. That is your first responsibility when you're driving as far as I'm concerned. And I've also added gear because obviously you've got to change gear. I put gear after speed because you want to slow down first before you change to a lower gear. And then I've changed look to decide because decide is what they actually meant by look. It's just look wasn't very descriptive and never really made sense to me, but decide does. It means now it's time to make a decision whether you should go or stop. And that brings me on to why this routine is so important. Most people I teach to drive tend to do the same things wrong. And one of the major things they do wrong is when they approach junctions, they spend the entire time trying to figure out if it's safe to go, instead of focusing on slowing the car down and then selecting the appropriate gear so they're ready to go. Here are some examples of the types of problems that are caused by trying to do a decision too early. This driver who is spending the entire time looking right as they're approaching the junction ends up stopping too early because they've forgotten where the give way line is. This driver ends up driving into the pavement because they're looking right so much at the roundabout that they've forgotten where they're steering. And this driver ends up driving into the right lane, into another car, because they're not looking where they're going. So really, the most important part of the routine is decision, and it's leaving decision to the end, which is why the routine exists. It's there to ensure you do your mirrors, signal, speed, and gear before you look to see if it's safe to go. Because once drivers, particularly learner drivers, start to look to make a decision, they rarely come back and control the car afterwards. So let's say they're in third gear and they start looking right and they see an opportunity. They feel impelled to go, even though they might need first gear. And then they end up stalling halfway in the junction. So if you're learning to drive and you want to increase your progress and move forwards at a faster rate, I highly recommend only moving on to make a decision once you're sure the car is ready to stop and go. You're slow enough to stop at the line, but you're also in a good gear to help you go once you see your opportunity. Leaving your decision to the very end of the routine and making sure you've slowed the car down enough to stop at the line, but also you're in the correct gear and able to continue will definitely help you learn faster. Another great thing about the routine is it prevents you from forgetting things. Here's an example of me talking myself through the routine. I highly recommend you talk yourselves through the routine when you're trying to do junctions too. So, about to turn left, 
centre left mirror, left signal, use the brake to slow down to about 10 miles an hour, gear two, bring the clutch up, and the side looks safe, so I'm going. Now, having talked myself through that routine has ensured that I've remembered to do everything. I've remembered to check my mirrors, to signal, I've remembered to slow down appropriately, I'm not coming in too fast or stopping too early. I remember to change gear, that's an important one. And then decision, no one really forgets about decision. Here is an example of a typical new driver trying to do a junction without following the routine. So I'm turning left here, so center left mirror, left signal, so far so good. Start slowing down, start looking to see if it's safe to go. I think I might be able to go. Oh, damn, I stalled. I forgot the gear. So, and my position's terrible as well. I'm in, the, I'm in the road, I'm at an angle, so I've got to hold the clutch down, put it in first gear, make sure the engine's started. And when it's safe, gas and bike point, and try and add loads of steer to claw back the fact I hadn't done the position on the approach. Much harder. Whatever junction you're approaching, your routine is the same. Whether it's traffic lights, mini roundabout, complex junctions, just normal T-junctions, you will do the same routine. Well, almost the same. There are slight differences in your speed and gear depending on whether it's an open or closed junction. Here's an example of an open junction. Even though I'm still far back from the giveaway line, I can see who I need to give way to nice and early. But in this closed junction, I won't be able to see left or right until I reach the line. Therefore, you approach open junctions at a different speed and gear to approaching closed junctions. So to approach an open junction, I recommend slowing down to around about 10 miles an hour and selecting second gear. Try to finish slowing down and finish selecting your gear, including bringing your clutch back up, far enough back from the junction so you still have time to stop if your decision is stop. I recommend keeping the clutch up once you've selected second gear so you're more ready to go. If you see an opportunity and the clutch is up, all you need to do is press the gas and you're away. However, if your clutch is down, you're gonna to need to use the gas and the clutch to get going. Having the clutch up and being ready to go just by pressing the gas improves your confidence in making decisions. Here is an example of me approaching an open junction. Take note of how early I finish slowing down to 10 miles an hour and how early I finish selecting second gear and bringing the clutch up, allowing myself plenty of time to make a decision. So center right mirror, right signal for signal. Now I'm doing speed. As it's open, I'm gonna slow down to 10 miles an hour. And notice how early I slow down. I'm gonna get second gear now and bring the clutch up. And I've finished doing my gear this far back. Now I've got time to look and make a decision. It looks clear, so I'm gonna turn right. Easy as that. On closed junctions, however, you can't see until you get very close to the line or to the line itself. So you're not going to be able to maintain 10 miles an hour and stay in second gear because that would be dangerous. That means you'll be at 10 miles an hour at the line. And if you decide to stop and you're at the line at 10 miles an hour, well, you can't stop. You're already over the line. So what you need to do is slow down to less than five miles an hour. I recommend like a very slow walking speed and select first gear. This time keep the clutch down, simply because you cannot go that slow with the clutch up. Ideally, you would have the clutch up and you'd be ready to go. But on this occasion, you're gonna be so slow, you can't have the clutch up. So you'll have to leave it down until you make your decision. Here is an example of me approaching a closed junction. Again, take particular note of how early I slow down and how early I finish selecting first gear, giving myself a little bit of time to roll, steer around the bend and make a decision. So center and left mirror, left signal. I'm gonna slow down to about five miles an hour, less than five miles an hour before the mouth of the junction and select first gear. Notice how early I've slowed down. Now I've got time to steer around the bend and now I can look to see if it's safe to go. Looks clear, bit of gas, bit of bite point and I'm away. 
the rest of the routine is fairly straightforward. So mirrors, if you're turning left, you should check your center and left mirror. If you're turning right, you should check your center and right mirror. That's to see what's around you. Now, if there's someone behind you, you should still do the junction. Just make sure you're not gonna hit any cyclists or any motorbikes or any cars overtaking you when you do the junction. Then there's signal, also fairly straightforward. Signal left for left, right for right. Remember that the indicator stalk goes down when you go left in the same way as the steering wheel and up when you go right, again in the same way as the steering wheel. And in Asia or some Asian cars, the indicator stalks on the right side of the steering wheel, which is quite unusual, but you still see that sometimes. So that way, turning left, the indicator will be going up and turning right, the indicator will be going down. However, if it's misleading, don't use your indicator. It's better not to signal than to signal in a misleading way. Make sure you finish slowing down and changing gear before you get to the junction with a little bit of time. You don't wanna finish changing gear at the line of the junction because then you've left yourself no time to make a decision. If you're at the line and you've just finished changing gear, you need to, you need to decide instantly. That's not gonna help you develop your decision-making skills. Better to finish slowing down and finish changing gear with at least five seconds of that slow rolling time, five miles an hour on a closed junction, 10 miles an hour on an open junction, at least five seconds of rolling time to give you time to look at the junction and figure out who you need to wait for. Something else you wanna make sure you do is make sure you slow down, make sure you do speed in that routine before you do gear. It's another common problem that my customers tend to want to do gear before they slow down because they're worried about the gear, they're worried about forgetting it. So let's get it out of the way. Let's do the gear now. But the problem is when you're doing gear, you're not slowing down. So you're still approaching the junction quite quickly and then you leave yourself having to slow down very late and quite harshly. Also, the car doesn't want to be in the lower gear when you're at a higher speed. The car wants to go into the lower gear when you're at the lower speed. So make sure you slow down first to your lower speed and then select the lower gear. However, if you're worried about stalling, you think, well, I've got to change the lower gear to slow down, or I will stall. Well, don't worry too much because the car will generally warn you if it's about to stall, it will start juddering. And when the revs are low, when the revs are down to about 1,000 RPM, just push the clutch down, then your car's not gonna stall. So finish slowing down with your clutch down, then select your gear, gear one or gear two, and then you're ready to make a decision. But most of all, leave decision to the end of that routine. I know it's tempting and it's instinctive. You want to instinctively look left and right to see if it's safe to go. But in my experience of teaching people to drive, once my customer starts to make a decision, once they start to look to see if it's safe to go, they forget about their steering. They start drifting to the left. I have to take the steering wheel to help them. They start over braking because they're not looking where they're going. They're not looking where they're stopping or they under brake, they're coming in too fast. And most of the time, they forget about the gear as well. Not to mention that you can't even make a decision when you're far back anyway, because normally you can't see, or if you can see, the situation's gonna change by the time you get there. So trying to make a decision early is a complete waste of time. You're better off focusing on gears and speed. Now, this is not how I expect you to do junctions for the rest of your life. I'm not saying I do junctions like this. I don't do junctions like this. When I approach a junction, I slow down, I change gear, and I make decisions all at the same time. That's because I'm experienced. I've been driving for nearly 15 years, and, it, and it's second nature to me. But when you're learning, you need to focus on one thing at a time. Once you start trying to focus on too many things, you end up doing everything very poorly. So this routine is your guide. It, it helps you remember everything to do, and it also helps you concentrate on one thing at a time. So, to sum up, first of all, you check your mirrors. Center left mirror for going left, center right mirror for going right. Then you do the appropriate signal if it's not misleading. Then you move on to speed. So if it's an open junction, slow down to about 10 miles an hour. If it's a closed junction, try to get less than five miles an hour. And then move on to gear once you finish speed. If it's an open junction at 10 miles an hour, second gear. If it's a closed junction and you're less than five miles an hour, first gear, leaving the clutch down. Remember, if it's second gear, you leave the clutch up. Only once you've done all that, do you allow yourself to even have a slightest look to the right to see if it's safe to go. I recommend focusing fully on controlling your car as you approach that junction. And when you finish controlling the car and you're ready, then make decision. And then when you see your opportunity, you can take it. If you can learn to do these five steps well, 
I'm confident you will find all junctions a whole lot easier. Well, that's all for this one. Please comment for what videos you want to see in the future. Please like it if you liked it, and please subscribe to get my future videos.